Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to share with you the Lawn Fawn Hive 5 Card Kit. This is such a fun and sweet card kit and I had so much fun creating with this. So I did two cards, but I'm only going to show one in the video for you here today, which is this yellow honeycomb one. Here's a look at what you're going to receive in the High Five kit. So starting with a stamp set, we have this sweet little four by six stamp set that has a bunch of these little bumblebees, the hive, some honey, a banner, a flower, and then also some really punny sentiments. There's also a coordinating die for that stamp set and these dies to create a tag. Also in the kit, which is one of my favorite parts, is this hexagon stencil. And I'm going to show you how this works to create your own honeycomb background. But I do have another card to share over on my blog where I did a rainbow assortment of colors. This is a quick look at the pattern paper that you're receiving in the kit as well. I'm going to start off by stamping out some of my images. I'm using a small piece of 80 pound white cardstock that I lined my images up on and I'm going to stamp it down with my Misty tool using the jet black ink from Lawn Fawn, which is Copic friendly. And I do plan on coloring these images with my Copic markers to make sure I have a really good impression, especially on that bee, I'm gonna stamp it twice. Now I'm going to bring in some of my yellow Copic markers and color in my two bees. You can see I used the same image twice. I just really liked this bee because I think it can go in any direction and is fun to add to my card. So I did some yellows there. I did a very light blue, which I think is maybe BG11 for the wings. And then I'm going to color the jar of my honey a light brown. There's not a lot of room to do shading, so this goes pretty quick. Now there's also coordinating dies in that set, and I'm going to take each of those coordinating dies, line them up over the image, hold them down with a low tack tape, and die cut these out and set them off on the side to work on my background. I thought it would be really cute to create my own background and have it be all of these honeycombs. So I'm taking that largest one on the stencil and I'm lining it up up in the corner of my 80 pound white cardstock that is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm holding that down with the magnets from my make art station and just using some post-it notes, I'm going to mask off all over the edges because I don't want to get ink on the edges or inside of those other shapes. And then I'm going to come in with my lightest color of ink, which is the sunflower ink from Lawn Fawn. Using a blending brush, I'm going to blend in that whole area. So after I have this all blended in, I'm going to just pick up those post-it notes and I'm going to reuse these throughout my card front. I'm going to take that large area again, that same stencil that I just used, and I'm going to match it up and kind of put it down and kitty corner from my other hive. So what I'm essentially doing is just creating an entire background filled with this uh, honeybee hive, not sure of the words, honeybee hive honeycomb. So once again, I held the stencil down with my magnets and I'm putting the post-it notes around the rest of the area and blending on that sunflower ink. You can see I'm blending right to left and left to right to make sure I'm getting complete coverage inside of that stencil. Once again, I'm going to remove the stencil, pick it up, line it down in the bottom corner and repeat those same steps. I am not cleaning the stencil in between since I am using the same color throughout the entire panel. So I'll just keep repeating that. I'm going to take this and put it in the top corner just to fill that in. I am going to be trimming this panel down, but I like to always start with a full card front just in case I change my mind. At the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing a closer look at another card that I created. I'm also going to have blog pictures and I'll have that blog link down below where I did a rainbow assortment of color, which how do you not do a rainbow when you have something like this? So coming up to my last piece here, I'm going to finish blending that stencil in. And then after I remove this, I'm going to go back over that entire background with my blending brush. I'm using some of the leftover ink and then also picking up some more ink from my ink pad and just lightly going over that just to make the background not so stark white. So after I have this background completely filled in, I'm going to bring the stencil in again. And this time I'm going to use some of the other elements on it. There are two other ones, and this is going to really create the look of honey in that honeycomb. So I'm lining it up with the stencil that I already did, and I have that center piece there. Now you're going to be able to see in person better how this lines up in the center. There's going to be an outside edge to that honeycomb, so it's going to have kind of that transition from a light color to a dark color. And then I'm going to bring in number two pencil ink 
which is just a darker color of yellow. I need to apologize if I sound a little scratchy sometimes. Voiceovers in the morning are not really a good idea for me, but I really wanted to get this done and this is the only time I had to do it. So after I blended in that first part, I'm going to move my stencil once again, kind of lining this up so I leave that one edge that's going to have the light color. And this is also going to create that center piece. Then I can mask off those areas. You don't have to mask off if you are very confident in your blending. I tend to go outside of the lines of the stencil. I kind of do the same thing while I'm coloring sometimes. So I always mask off just to protect the rest of my area. I put a lot of work into my ink blending and I don't want to ruin it by overlapping and kind of adding things where they're not supposed to. So I'm going to continue moving around my stencil once again, adding in that number two pencil in all of those areas. Now there is another couple pieces to this stencil. And if you wanted to add even more contrast to this, you could come in with a very light brown. It's hard to think sometimes light brown with yellow, but it really does kind of give a golden look to your honeycomb. Now I'm finishing up this last piece down at the very bottom. And then I'm going to give you a look at what this looks like all complete. We have these beautiful honeycombs on here. Now I am going to trim this down. So I'm going to take my paper trimmer. And what I like to do is just trim off a quarter of an inch from each edge. And that's going to give me a nice clean look and also leave a nice white border on my card front. I'm going to use a sentiment off of that high five stamp set. And I have some black licorice cardstock here that I'm prepping with my anti-static powder tool. I'm going to ink up that sentiment with the Yeti ink. So it is a white pigment ink. It does stay wet a little bit longer. And then I'm going to sprinkle on my white embossing powder, tap off any excess back into my drawer, and then just go ahead and heat set this with my heat tool. I don't always show on camera, but I like to take a Swiffer cloth and just buff over that once that heat embossing is cooled off. And then I'll remove any excess powder. Now I'm bringing in a mini paper trimmer and just trimming the sentiment down into a thin strip. I'm taking my trim down panel. So the panel actually is going to measure three and three quarters by five inches. And I'm going to add dimension to it by layering it with some foam tape. After I peel off the backing, I can add this to a card front. This is a white card front measuring four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm taking my sentiment and adding a little bit of tape runner to the back and then I can position that up at the top, kind of slightly overhanging the edge just a little bit. And I'm going to glue my little spoon here onto my honey jar. That just makes it easier for me to attach foam squares to the back once everything is all connected. So once again, adding foam squares to the back of the rest of the images, and I'm kind of placing these like I would embellishments. Normally embellishments, I kind of do little triangles. And so that's what I'm doing with these small images. Now I couldn't help but add some sparkle to this. Now you can use the Lawn Fawn glitter, chunky glitter, but I decided to bring in the sparkle glaze. So I'm just taking that and I'm putting it over just some of those little hexagons on my background, kind of spreading it out to fill in the areas. And I'm also going to place a little bit on the wings as well. And that's going to complete my card project for today. So how cute is that? I absolutely love this kit. This is so much fun to create with tons of ideas. I do have another card to share over on my blog. So be sure to click the link to check that out. I will have all of the supplies listed down below in the video description and on my blog as well. Now, I'm not sure how long this kit will last. So if you love it, definitely head over and pick one up. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day.